we've just finished with our values and ethics, and I think we would all agree that our attitude plays a huge part in our success, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I'm going to introduce you guys to a model called the Sales Congruence Model. And what it is is really a diagnostic tool to help understand or diagnose why is it that two people can go through the same product training or have the same product knowledge, but one person performs at a very high level while someone else might struggle or perform at a lower level. And it might be that it's me, that I, sometimes I, I feel like I'm really performing at a higher level and at other times, why am I struggling at, at different parts? And so this is a tool of our model called the sales congruence model. And there's five dimensions that we're going to break down and talk about as we go through it. The first of which is the, value, the view of selling. If I were to define that, how do I see sales as a profession? In other words, do I feel like I bring value to my doctors and to my patients and, and the people that we work with? Or do I feel like I'm an interruption in their day? Or maybe there's a doctor that's such a high level surgeon, I feel intimidated when I call on that type of doctor versus bringing value to them as I go through the, to, and call on them. Now, interesting thing about this is if you have selling, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, I, I was with a group several years ago and there was actually pharmaceutical, it wasn't device, but pharmaceutical. And there was a lady in the group that raised her hand as soon as I got to this part and she said, that is my problem. And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, when I sit in that waiting room, I know that the patients are looking at me going, you're the reason that, that we're going to be late today or you're the reason the health insurance is the way that it is. And I said, let me ask you to stop for a second. And I had about 40 people in the room and I said, group, do you think that impacts her ability to, to close that doctor, have confidence in front of that doctor when she's in front of them? And they said, absolutely. And I said, okay, well then the question becomes, how do you get past that? And someone raised her hand in the back and she nailed it. She said, I used to feel how she feels. I don't feel that way anymore. And she said, you know, I got an opportunity to work with one of our doctors and I got a chance to, the kids would ride horseback as part of their therapy. And she said, I got to meet the kids that took our medication and I got to meet the parents. And they said, you don't understand what a sense of normalcy your medication brings back into our, in our family's life. And she said, from that day on, I stopped selling pharmaceuticals. And when I go into a waiting room, I look around and think, I wonder if there's a family or a kid that I can help today. And you can see the shift between selling something every day versus helping patients every day. The second area is our view of our abilities. In one word, that's our confidence. How do we feel about what we do every single day? Do I have the confidence to know that I can go in and make a difference for their practice and for the patients? The middle one is our values, honesty, integrity, doing the right thing. Now down here is commitment to activities. In this dimension, let's camp out here a little bit. Am I doing the things daily that I need to do in order to be successful? We all know that we have to make X amount of calls and do these daily things, but I think sometimes in sales we get caught up in doing not results producing activities, but kind of that get my manager off my back type of activities. Doing the busy work, the things I need to, that honestly that make me look productive, but they're not developing new business opportunities. And I had a great example of this. I had someone a few years ago that said to me, it's kind of like going to the gym. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And she said, she said, you know that person and you walk in the gym and they're on the elliptical and they're reading a book and they don't have any resistance. They're just going through the motions. Well, they're just kind of doing their daily deal. Whereas there's someone else that's really working hard and you can see them doing push-ups and kettlebells and all the things that they're doing to really work out, sweating through their shirt. Well, at the end of six months, both of them can say, I've been going to the gym for six months every single day. But one of them's going to say, I'm starting to see results. And the other person's going to go, this machine doesn't work, right? Or making excuses. And the reality is one person's been doing result producing activities. Now in our business, what that looks like is I'm calling on new business opportunities. I'm not going and sitting with the existing cases that I know they like me, if you will. So I'm developing new business opportunities, asking new questions and those types of things. Whereas the other person is not going to get results because they're just doing go through the motions activities, if you will. Okay. And the last one is our belief in product. Do we believe, and I always ask a group, I'll ask you guys, is that important? Absolutely it is, because if you don't believe in the product, how long does it take for the doctor to understand or to figure out that you really don't buy into it? You're going through the motions, if you will. So that's a key piece. Now you'll notice on, your, on, your, on the, the model here that there are arrows between each of these circles. And what those represent is gaps, meaning that ideally the word congruence means I want to bring these circles into alignment if you will or into congruence and if you could picture a camera lens and each one of these circles is a lens when you pull those into focus or into alignment you really get laser focused and you get a good view of what it is that you're looking to do well if they're not in alignment though it gets really blurry and what I mean by that is I might have a strong view of selling and a strong view of my abilities but if I don't believe in the product that we're selling, I'm probably not going to pull it out of the bag very often. Therefore, my value system says, I don't think it really does what we say it's going to do. And my commitment to activities drops off where I'm going to show only the products that I really believe in versus that. 
Or it might be that I love our products, they're outstanding, but my view of selling is I feel pushy and slick and all those kind of things when I go call on new business, that's why I don't do it. What's really going on is your value system feels uncomfortable with, with that and therefore your commitment to activities is we like to spend time with people we like. Does that make sense? And so this is a nice model too and as we sit there, if we break it down, you'll be able to go back and look at this and just try to help diagnose what is it that's causing this, my, my activity to go down. Because oftentimes what we'll find is my lowest area might be, if I rated myself, my lowest area might be my commitment to activities. So what's causing that to go down? That's usually not the problem, it's a symptom of the problem. And what I mean by that is it might be my belief in product that's causing my activities to go down. Or it might be my view of selling that's causing, view of my abilities that I'm new, I need to learn the product that's causing my activities to drop off. <music>